It really isn't. Kirk Michaels meant a great deal to me. And it's terribly important that I find out what's happened to him. Well, I certainly don't get this kind of request every day. But I don't see why I shouldn't help you. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Although I do have to warn you that uh, the trail is pretty cold. It's been ten years. If I had referred you to the Missing Persons Bureau, they would have told you that it's very difficult to find a missing person, especially if they don't want to be found. Yeah, I can understand that. My friend at the Bureau keeps telling me that my job is a lot easier than his. It's much easier to find a wanted criminal. Yeah, well, that's what I really want to know. Is Kirk Michaels wanted? I see. Well, I'll see what I can dig up. And stay put and help yourself to some coffee if you'd like. Thank you. Kirk, please, don't let it be true. You can't be a criminal. You just can't. She's on her way up. Terrific. Thank you, Oscar. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Kavanaugh's friendly delivery service. Oh, terrific. You Thank are. you. I was uh, just starting to work on these monthly expense reports for the station. Oh. Are we still in business? You got me. I can't make out any of it. <laughs> Give me some time. Oh, I will. Okay. <laughs> How is my favorite niece this morning? She is absolutely wonderful, and she's upstairs sleeping. I'm sorry, but look, I promise you that she will be awake before you leave. She better be. You know, you look wonderful. Must be the, uh... <laughs> this altitude agrees with you. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it does. I'll tell you one thing. The two of us have been sleeping better. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. I don't know, Nicole. I just wouldn't have been able to sleep in Oakdale. I don't think it would matter how long I stayed there. Are you definitely planning to sell that house? Well, I haven't spoken to a realtor yet, and I still have a, a lot of things to get out of there, mostly personal. Mm. I, um, I really don't want or, or need any of the furniture. Well, I suppose you realize that the market isn't very good these days. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Money uh, isn't a problem. Right. Well, it's a pity that you can't enjoy it more. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful for it. It's just that it, it doesn't make up for the losses. Yes, I know, but you do have something that money can't buy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, listen, speaking of babies, uh, mm -hmm. you do know what Raven pulled, don't you? Yes, I was there when Logan came to tell Geraldine. You heard anything more? Well, I don't know. Logan was here last night. Nicole, he's heartbroken. I've, I've never seen anyone so crushed in my whole entire life. And the worst thing is there's nothing he can do because of his and Raven's relative legal status. Yeah, I'm sure he knows all about it. He's an attorney. He's also the district attorney, which means he's a public official, which means he cannot do what Raven did and steal Jamie back. There must be something he can do through the courts. Well, I'm certain he'll try. He's just not very optimistic. Oh, uh, maybe you don't know. Uh, Raven and Jamie checked out of the hotel. No one knows where they are. Yeah. <sighs> Babies can cause a, a lot of trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> maybe I should change, change my mind about our decision. What decision is that? About having a baby. Miles and I have decided to have one. No, you're, you're not serious. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm serious. We, we talked about it last night, and he agreed with me. Woo! Well, congratulations! <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, I'm so happy. No, wait a minute. But let's not get carried away. I'm not pregnant yet. Oh, well, you will be. I mean, the decision is made, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Oh, uh, excuse me. Mommy. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Who's this? It's Raven. How are you? Thought maybe you'd like to get together and talk about our baby. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard the news by now that mother and baby have had a very happy reunion. Oh, Raven, where are you? Listen, has Logan come over there? I'm sure he probably came right over with the news. Listen, if you talk to him, tell him that Jamie's just fine and that he's very, very happy to be with his mommy. Raven, I don't have to tell you that Logan is very upset about what you did. What did I do? I went to the hospital to pick up my baby. I felt that he needed a mother's tender, loving care after being so sick. Now, you, you have to agree with that. What you did was unfair, and it was also a dirty trick. It would have been a lot less fair to, to bring him to a babysitter or to some uh, hired policeman like Logan did. I mean, he's much better off with me. How is he? Aside from having been sick, you haven't seen him in months. Mm, babies don't forget their mommies. <laughs> you just wait and see. Look, we have so much in common now. We're both single mothers. We should get together and have a little... Um, yeah, I uh, would like to get together. We can talk about all this. Well, let's do it tonight. I could come over to your place. Well, I don't really have a place yet. It's just temporary. So uh, maybe I'd better visit with you. Well, sure. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Jamie again. Well, Jamie's not coming. I'm going to give him a babysitter. So uh, I'll see you about eight, okay? Uh, uh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Well, apparently she's still in town. It doesn't appear as though she's going to tell anyone where. Oh, three, are you out of your mind? I can't authorize a citywide search for what? For a woman who stole her own child? I didn't say we charge her with that, but there's got to be a violation involved here somewhere. I figured you wanted us to concoct some sort of violation. Doesn't the end justify the means? No, it doesn't. We can't go around inventing phony crimes even to solve real situations. Where would it end? How long would it be before we start concocting the problems themselves? All right. You're right. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Hey, look, Steve, I understand. I feel just as bad for Logan as you do. He's my friend, too. Well, that's why I thought you might go along with this. I can't and I won't. That's not the way I run this force. Sure. Well, thanks for your time, Chief. Oh, uh, listen, by the way, how's that undercover assignment coming along? Well, I'm still going over a list of possibilities. And Deborah's name is definitely off the list. It's got to be a man. It's got to be somebody who can fool the mob into thinking that he's one of them. I guess this assignment uh, is kind of risky, rather dangerous. Most undercover work is. And I suppose this man should be uh, unattached, considering the fact that it's going to be a while, at least three months. I'm still looking for volunteers. Yes? You're kidding. Of course. Citywide search, huh? Well, Raven, we weren't exactly sure we'd ever see you again. Why not? I live in Monticello. I have no intention of moving. Raven, I heard about your little caper at the hospital yesterday. Oh, that's cute. I've never heard Jamie called a little caper before. Raven, you know what you did wasn't exactly legal. It wasn't. I thought it was perfectly legal for a mother to go in the hospital and pick up her son. Where are you living now, now that you've checked out of the hotel suite? Sounds like you've been looking for me, Derek. I hope it was personal. Where are you staying, Raven? I hope you don't mind my asking. Well, not at all. I didn't know you were interested, too. I moved into this lovely little apartment. It's furnished, it has a backyard, so Jamie can play. I think the two of us are going to be real happy. What about your husband? We're separated. You knew that. I thought you told me he was one of your brighter officers. Raven, I hope you don't think that keeping Jamie is going to be as easy as it was taking him out of that hospital. Jamie hasn't protested. He loves his mommy. If you don't believe me, ask him. He doesn't talk very much, but he says mommy. It's real cute. Raven, what did you come down here for? What do you want from the police? I want what every other law-abiding citizen wants, a little protection. Against what? Threats. 
like uh, what the detective just did. Wait a minute. Look, Raven. Look, I know why you're so upset, because we took away your babysitting job. Now you and Deborah Saxon can't moonlight anymore. Can you imagine what went on there? Steve, that's okay. That's all right. Goodbye, detective. Listen, if I ever ask for a police officer, don't send him, okay? Let me ask you one more time. What do you want here? I already told you, and I meant it, protection. I want you and everybody else to know that I will not stand for any threats against me or my baby, and I'm just making an official notice that I will sue anyone who tries to interfere with my life, be it a police officer or the district attorney. Has anybody made threats? No, not yet, but I just wanted to warn you. If anyone tries to take my baby by force, I will scream bloody murder so loud they will hear me in the Supreme Court building. That's not going to happen. Nobody's going to do anything like that, least of all one of my officers. Oh, really? Logan and one of your police officers tried it last night, and I know Logan will try it again. I doubt that very much. Well, he better not. And I think maybe you should tell him that as a friend. You see, he has no legal rights, and any attempt to kidnap Jamie will be just that kidnapping. Now, he has a lot to lose, including his freedom, so uh, why don't you just tell him to stay away? I'll keep your advice. Oh, no, not you. I don't want you to stay away. Look, Raven, you'll have wait, to excuse wait, me. Derek. Derek. Look, don't be mad at me, okay? I, I know I was a little bit selfish before, but honestly, I like you for yourself, and you are still the most attractive man I've met in a long time. You like my perfume? It is the uh, lingering kind. Just so you'll be reminded of me the rest of the day. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Kirk. How are you? How are you feeling? I, I'm, uh, I'm fine. How would you know where to find me? Well, Emily called me uh, late last night. She said you were sleeping. Oh, that's right. I went to bed early. I guess the trip took a lot out of me. And of course, you know about all the trouble we had finding a place to stay. Yeah. Is Emily there? No, no. She went out early this morning to the police station. She had to ask them the big question, whether or not I was wanted. The police station? All by herself? Well, yeah. She said she didn't want me going with her. She said she didn't want me to be arrested my first day back in Monticello. Yes. I don't think she's going to have much luck, though. At least I hope she doesn't have much luck. I, I want to find out about myself, of course, but uh, not from a policeman. Yes. And when she gets back tonight, we have to make some phone calls. Uh, names from the book. There are about a dozen Michaels listed, so we're going to call them. Yes. Well, when she does come back, uh, would you have a call me, Kirk? I'm very anxious to talk to her. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll do that, Doctor. Okay. Uh, thanks, Kirk. Bye-bye. I'm worried, Molly. I'm, I'm terribly worried about Emily. She'll be all right, Dr. Gold. Emily's a lot stronger than you give her credit for. She'll take care of herself no matter what happens. You really think so? Doctor, I have worked for you a long time. Well, I guess you know that Emily... Well, I feel about her the same as I feel about my own daughter. <laughs> Not that she'd believe it. <laughs> yes, I, I... I know it's the truth, Molly. I know your devotion to her. And I... Well, I've been watching her. That man has made a difference coming back into her life. It's changed her. Made her stronger. I hope so, Molly. She'll have to be strong for... for what might happen next. I've gone for a walk. I promise to be careful.
Deborah, I want to talk. Oh, excuse me. I was looking for Detective Saxon. Well, she, she left us about ten minutes ago. Oh. Well, if you see her, tell her I, I'm looking for her. Sure. Oh, I, I'm Steve Cutter. See you later. There won't be any police record. I know it. It doesn't even matter if it does. <laughs> he and I are going to have a new life together, and that's all that's important. Poor Kirk. He's in his hotel room alone. He's wondering and he's waiting. I really should call him. think you'd mind my using the telephone. I, I just wanted to call my husband at the hotel. No problem at all. He didn't have to hang up. Well, he evidently isn't there. I let it ring a dozen times, but he didn't answer. Oh, well, maybe he stepped out to get a newspaper or something. Yeah, I guess so. Just that he, he's not completely well. You see, he injured his leg a few weeks ago, and he spends most of his time in bed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure you're very anxious to get back to your husband, uh, I don't think I'll be keeping you here very long. Well, does that mean that you couldn't find anything on, on Kirk Michaels? Well, I found a file, but as you can see, it's quite thin. Well, what does it say? Well, oh, by the way, you were right about that car theft arrest. Uh, it did occur a long time ago, but we had a file on it. And he got off with a suspended sentence on that one. Well, was there anything else? There were no convictions, if that's what you mean. Uh, convictions. That means he was never sentenced to prison? Well, I can't really answer that, Mrs. Mitchell. You see, according to the little information I have here, your friend was arrested on three separate occasions. Oh, my God. But the arrests never led to a conviction. He was just brought in on various uh, offenses to be questioned. And this all occurred in 1971. Well, what happened after that? Well, that's where our record ends. You see, Kirk Michaels left Monticello. So we have no further records on him. Well, do you have any idea where he went? I don't think he wanted the police to know. to this, he was wanted for questioning concerning a crime that hadn't been committed yet. I don't understand. <clears throat> well, the police received a tip from an informant about some payroll robbery that was planned. 
The informant was applying weapons for it. Kirk Michael's name was given as one of the planners. But that doesn't mean he committed the crime. No, it doesn't. It's just that the police wanted to talk to him. I guess he found out because by the time the police got around to looking for him, he'd already left Monticello. And no one heard anything since? I'm afraid not. I'm sorry if you're disappointed, Mrs. Mitchell. Oh, no, I'm not disappointed. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that he, he didn't reform. He could have given up that life. Well, you don't know for sure, do you? No, we don't know for sure. Well, that's all it means. He just made his life somewhere else. I can't tell you where or what he made of it, though. I understand. Oh, well, thank you, Detective Saxon. You've been a big help, and I, I really do appreciate it. I have to get back to my husband now. Fine. I hope he feels better. Thank you. Sure he will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. Is, uh, is that your missing persons case? Yeah, all I could really tell her, well, the person she's looking for is still missing. Mm. How did it go in Chief Mallory's? I have got some good news. A missing person has just been found. Who? Oh. Not less than a half an hour ago, guess who walked into Mallory's office? Not Raven. Mm-hmm. Bold as brass, as my grandma used to say. That woman certainly has gall, doesn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nerves of steel. <laughs> well, at least we know she hasn't skipped town with Jamie. Did you talk to her? Uh-huh. She wasn't exactly delighted that I was there, but I found out why she was. Why? Because of us. She wants to make sure that we don't attempt to snatch Jamie. She certainly does have good timing. You know, I'll have to give her credit. She is shrewd. By going to talk to Mallory, she's made it impossible for us to try to do anything. Yeah, I know. What's worse about it is that she's... she's right. We can't do a thing. Even if we did know where she's staying, we can't break the law. Neither can Logan. Yeah, I know. And that's how Mallory feels about it, too. That's uh, not the only thing we talked about. What do you mean? Well, you know that uh, undercover assignment out west, the one you can't take. Oh, yes, I know. The Tucson police requested a man. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with male chauvinism. It's because they want a man to go undercover for three or four months. Approximately six foot, blonde. I never heard... I never heard that description. Well, that's what Mallory says. You know what I'm suggesting, don't you? Chief Mallory didn't offer you this assignment. Well, it was a pretty strong implication. Steve, it's pretty dangerous, you know. Pretending to be a crook, ingratiating yourself with criminals. I know. I could get myself killed. Not that anybody around here would give a tinker's damn, of course. Are you seriously considering going? Mm-hmm. You know, they can find somebody else. I mean, they can bleach somebody's hair. Well, well, you'd really hate for me to leave, would you? Of course, I may never come back, except maybe in a, a pine box. Oh, would you stop it? I hate to hear you talk like... <sighs> you trying to get me upset? Yeah, sorry. Just trying to see if you'd miss me. If I was gone for three or four months. Well, I'm not in the mood for playing games, Steve. It seems to me we've got better things to do, like trying to figure out how to help Logan. Logan? Hmm. I thought we were talking about me. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <sighs> Honestly, sometimes I think you're a bigger baby than Jamie. Jamie? Why don't you go to sleep with the teddy bear, huh? Sleep nice and sleep. I'll teach you a game of cards afterwards if you go to sleep, huh? How's that? You want to go? Jimmy, please. Ah, oh, thank God. Another ten minutes and I would have called back the Monticello police force. What's the matter, Daddy? Is baby too much for you? I told you I'm not good with babies. Yes, unless the baby is a female and over 17 years old, right? Take, take the baby. 
okay? Just, Raven, never ask me to do this again, will you? I'll commit a crime for you, but never babysit again, okay? He's so adorable. He's such a little angel, aren't you? Well, the little angel was a perfect devil for most of the time you were gone. It's probably because he was hungry or wet. Ah, yes, he needs changing. Well, I will do that and put him to bed like the good little mommy that I am. Uh, Raven, you, uh, didn't happen to bring any liquor with you when you moved, did you? Yes, I did. It's uh, in a box somewhere. You have to look for it. Well, I've been looking all day. Well, look some more. Why do you have to drink this early in the day? <laughs> After my experience, I need it desperately. You know, it's a wonder babies ever grow up. I mean, this kid all alone, going from person to person. It's a wonder mankind ever survived. Ah, uh, Eureka. What? Nothing, nothing. I see you found your baby bottle. Well, you never told me what you did this morning. Where that uh, impossible, urgent errand led you. I went to see Derek Mallory. You what? Yeah, the chief of police. He looks so handsome behind that desk. He has such an air of authority. I love that in a man. I just, I adore it. I went there on business. What business? I wanted to make sure none of his detectives decided to steal Jamie back, because I know that's just what they're thinking of doing. Look, I doubt that very much. They're police officers. They could lose their jobs. Well, let's just say I wanted to uh, buy some insurance. Oh, yes, that's more like it, isn't it? That's why you want Chief Mallory on your side as insurance. The more men you keep on your string, the better, right? It never hurts to make friends. Well, listen to me, Ray. Let me tell you something. Don't get too friendly. I expect exclusive rights. Do you know what exclusive means? Let go of me. Let go of me! You men are all alike. There's not one of you that doesn't believe in a double standard. I have my standards all right, but they don't include you with Chief Mallory or Logan Swift or the Monticello soccer team. All right, that was an exaggeration. You probably don't even like soccer. Elliot, the only reason I'm interested in Derek Mallory is because he's the chief of police and a friend of Logan's. A spy in the enemy camp. Well, you never know how someone might be used. I know about myself. I don't use you. Except for one thing. That's why you're intrigued with Mallory, because he's playing hard to get. Well, maybe you should play that game a little more, huh? <laughs> now see what you did. You went and made him cry. Well, why don't you go and see what he wants? No, silly. Don't you know anything about raising a baby? You shouldn't go running every time they cry because that just spoils them. Well, obviously somebody always listened to your cries. They did not. I was completely ignored. If you think my mother went running for me all the time, you are out of your mind. She, uh, pretended that I wasn't even born. She used to say that she was much too young to have a baby. She would go screaming at Daddy that he made her old before her time. Well, he probably had something to do with it. <sighs> My daddy was a prince. He was much too good for her. The reason she got her millions and millions is because she sent him to an early grave. There. He stopped. When I get my money back, that's going to be the way my daddy intended it to be. You're trembling. I was the only one he ever loved. Oh, Elliot, I need help. But you've got everything you want. No, I don't. I need that letter. That letter I gave to April. I have to find it, and I have to destroy it. Please, please help me. Oh, 
Nicole. I'm so glad you could join me for lunch. Mm. We don't get the chance that often. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. Thank oh, you. thank you. Oh, I know, I know. We really should, too, you know, because we're colleagues. We could, we could deduct this as a business expense. All we have to do is talk a little bit of business. <laughs> well, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you today. I, I had a motive for asking you today, so um, lunch is on me. Don't be silly. No, 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 no. I mean it. I mean it. I would like to ask a favor of you. Hmm. I'll do anything I can to help either you or Mike. Well, uh, actually, it's not for either of us. It's for my nephew. Nicole, how would you like to give Kelly his start in show business? <laughs> no, I am not asking you to give him his own television show. On second thought... <laughs> no, dear, he, he needs a lot more experience. Well, what does he do? Does he act, sing, play an instrument? I... Well, actually, he, he does all those things, but he's a puppeteer. Really? Yeah. Hand puppets? Or... Yes. Yeah, Nicole, he made them himself. He told me that he created his friends to keep himself company. It's really somewhat sad because he's had a very lonely life. You said your brother and his wife travel a lot. Yeah, Lee is an architect and he has designed, oh, so many things. Hospitals, residential complexes, and they've mm -hmm. traveled all over. So wherever Lee and Jerry went, so went Kelly. Is Kelly an only child? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, an older child has unique problems. And in his case, they just kept moving so often, he just never got to make friends. So he made puppets? Yes. Mm. Oh, they're absolutely, absolutely delightful. He's very professional. I mean, there's nothing amateurish about it. And to see him oh, make them come to life, it's... It's a delight. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? Do you, uh, you want me to arrange some kind of television appearance? Or? No. Um, as I said, he he, uh, he needs a little more experience. But um, I suggested that he, he might practice by giving performances in front of live audiences. Mm -hmm. And the first thought that came to mind was Monticello General. <laughs> Great. That is, that is mm -hmm. a, that's a lovely idea. Yeah. The children's work. I, I think the children would just adore it. Mm. I'm going to try to get him some publicity on the, in the news. Mm, well, what do you want me to do? Talk to Miles. Would you? Well, sure. I mean, he knows all the hospital administrators. Nancy, they'd love to have Kelly do his thing for the children. Uh, I'll talk to Miles about it tonight. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm sure Kelly will be very grateful to you. Well, anything I can do to help an only child. I was one myself, you know. Mm. I think. You think? Well, there's a little family gossip. I don't know. I shouldn't mention it. See? Anyway, of course, I do know another only child. My son, Adam. Yes, of course. We don't intend to keep him an only child, though. Somehow I remember you mentioning something like that a while ago. Mm-hmm. I did. Well, Miles and I talked about it last night. And we both agree that uh, it would be very nice to have more than one child in the family. <laughs> We reached a decision. Oh, I'm so pleased for you, Nicole. I know that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And it's what Miles wants, too. You know what? You know what I, I think did it? Well, seeing how happy Julia is made April. your father called. He shouldn't have done that. He really shouldn't have done that. Operator, this is room 505. I'd like to make a toll call.
Dr. Galt? What is it? You've been so worried ever since those two left the house. I can't help worrying about them, Molly. Emily's never been away without me. Oh, now, that's not true. She went away to that summer camp once. Yes, but she was just a child then. And she hated it so much, I had to bring her home a month early. Oh, that's not the only reason you're worried. It's that young man, isn't it? You're afraid he's going to find out something about himself, aren't you? I just don't want to see my daughter hurt. Oh, well, no, I don't either, but... Well, I care a great deal for her, and I want her to be so happy. Oh, no, excuse me. Vault resident. Oh, Miss Emily. Yes, yes, he's here. Emily, thank goodness you called. I was really getting worried not hearing from you. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. I had to go out. I went to the police station to see what I could find out about Kirk. And what did you find out? Well, Daddy, he has a record. Yeah, I was afraid of that. But it's not really bad. He was arrested a few times, but he was never convicted. And that means that he wasn't guilty, doesn't it? I mean, they couldn't prove him guilty. Emily... Didn't they say anything about... No, they didn't tell me anything else, Daddy. You see, it seems that Kirk left town nine years ago, and nobody knows where he went. Huh. Daddy. Daddy, are you there? What's wrong? Daddy! Molly, are you sure he's all right? Yes, yes. He, he says he's feeling better, Miss Emily. It was just... One of those angina attacks. Now, I have given him his pills. Please, and I... let me talk to him. Well, all right, he wants to get back on, Miss Emily. No, no, just tell him to rest. Emily, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm all right. It was just hearing your news. But, Daddy, it wasn't bad news, honestly. The only thing bad about it is that it means that we won't be able to find much about Kirk's past in Monticello. Well, then there isn't any reason for you to stay there, is there? No, I guess there really isn't. Although I don't know where we're going to find out more about him. Nobody seems to know where he went from here. Then come home, Emily. Please, come home today. Well, I, I don't know what Kirk wants to do. Let me speak with him. Oh, uh, y you can't, Daddy. He went out for a walk. A walk? By himself? Yeah, I guess he must have gotten pretty bored lying around the hotel. Because uh, he just left me a note saying he'd be careful. Well, he, he shouldn't have done that, Emily. But I'm sure he'll be coming through the door any minute. And when he does, I'll tell him what I found out, and I'll ask him if we can go home today. All right? Yes, yes, as soon as you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, Daddy, you take care of yourself, and I'll call you if we're going to leave, okay? All right. I love you, Daddy. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, This Mrs. Mitchell? Yes, this is Mrs. Mitchell. Mrs. Mitchell, this is Officer Lamont. I'm with the Monticello Police Department. Now, don't be alarmed, but your husband, he's just been in an accident. And the only thing I, I know is that, that, that my husband was in some kind of an accident. Your husband was hit by a car. Oh, my God. Now, you don't need to worry. It just looks like it's bumps. There are no broken bones or anything like that. Doc's in there with him now. You know, I shouldn't be surprised the way that people drive in the city. Well, Mrs. Mitchell, your husband was only bumped by the car. And I'm not entirely certain that we can fault the driver, either. I, I don't know what you mean. Mrs. Mitchell, is your husband a well man? I mean, is he on any kind of medication or anything like that? Why do you ask? 
Well, about a half a dozen people witnessed the accident, and they all claimed that Mr. Mitchell appeared to be in kind of a daze. They said he acted as if he didn't know where he was. Stepped off the curb against the red light and walked right out into the traffic. No, 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 I can't believe that. Well, he is very lucky that the driver had good brakes. Now, I've got the uh, driver's name and license number in case you'd like to file an insurance claim. No, no, I don't care about that, just as long as Kurt's all right. Here's a doctor now. Doctor, I'm Kurt Mitchell's wife. How is he? Well, you can go in and see for yourself if you'd like. But just keep in mind that he's still in mild shock. Okay, thank you. Kirk? Kirk, are you all right? Hey, what's a nice kid like you doing in a joint like this, huh? What happened to your head? Oh, oh, I, I bumped it on the way in. I got here as soon as I could. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Only hurts when I breathe. Oh, Kirk, I was so worried about you. Hey, I'm okay. You should see the other guy. Thank God you're alive. Nurse, could you take his blood pressure now, please? Oh, wait a second, Herbie. You sure that's right? I mean, isn't the My ankle bones connected to the shin bones? What are you doing in these parts? I thought all your patients had private rooms overlooking the park. Oh, no, I'm just wandering around. Actually, Nicole is visiting a friend of hers is in for some minor procedure. We're going to have a bite to eat afterwards. And I'm on till midnight? Yo, too bad. Where is the justice? <laughs> you got your hands full, huh? I have a feeling it's going to be one of those days. Say, how'd you like to do a pal a favor? Sure, if I can. Well, I'm supposed to give the bruised ribs in room C the standard uh, take care of yourself speech before I released him. He's in with his wife now, but uh, maybe after lunch you could look in on him for me. Sure, I'll do that for you. that you were going to stay in the hotel room. Now, what made you go? Uh, Emily, I was feeling cooped up. I, I needed some air. But you should have just waited for me to get back. I didn't think that a walk around the block was going to hurt anybody. <sighs> you know, that policeman outside said, said that, 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 that you were acting very strangely. Well, I probably was. When I got outside, the, the noise, the people, the traffic, it confused me. It disoriented me. Well, it's, it's no wonder. There's certainly a lot more activity in this city than there is at home. It's just so strange. Emily, everything was... Everything was so familiar and unfamiliar all, all at the same time. Yeah, I'm sure you were terribly anxious. No. I was just dizzy. All I could think about was... was getting back to the hotel. And so you didn't watch where you were going. <laughs> no, I guess I didn't. I, I stepped off the curb. The next thing I remember, the blaring of the horns. And the street came up and hit me in the face. <laughs> you know, you're really lucky that car only bumped you. You could have been killed. I'm not lucky. I'm stupid, Emily. I'm stupid. No, look, just next time you promise me that you'll be more careful. I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you. I wanted to be incognito, so what happened? I, I have half the city of Monticello staring down at me. Well, you don't have to worry about the police anymore. What do you mean? What'd you find out at headquarters? Well, I talked to this very cooperative uh, detective, a woman, a very pretty Emily, one. Emily, go on. What did she say? Well, the car theft, theft that you committed in Monticello, it's on file. And... and? And go on. Well, there were some other charges. But there were no convictions. And there was nothing very serious. And it all happened a long time ago, in 1971. It was nine years ago. What did I do afterwards? You left town. Where'd I go? They don't know. Oh. Look, it's not important. The only thing that's important is that we know that you didn't do anything terrible in Monticello. Well, so, that's what you wanted to find so out. So maybe I went someplace else and did something terrible. So maybe you went someplace else and you, you got a job and you started to live a normal life. Yeah, Isn't maybe, that possible? Maybe, yeah. It means that you don't have to worry about Kirk Michaels anymore. No. At least not in Monticello, right? You know, I thought I was bringing you good news. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could call it that. The only thing that's important now is that you're alive and you're well and you're free. The police aren't after you. Kirk, you're safe.
You shouldn't have gone to the trouble, Molly. I'm afraid I don't have much of an appetite. Starving yourself isn't going to do anyone any good. I'm fine. Well, you don't look fine. Now, if you'd look at yourself in the mirror, you'd see there's practically no color in your face. <sighs> oh. Dr. Gault, you mustn't worry so much about Emily. Like it or not, she and Mr. Kirk are in Monticello. It's out of your hands. Molly, how can I help but not be concerned? My daughter is off in a strange city with a man who's not much more than a stranger to her. Please tell me what's on your mind. It might help. That young man left my daughter once. If something happened in, in Monticello, something or someone from his past comes along, makes him feel differently about himself, about Emily. And then you think he'll leave her again. She, she, she loves her, Molly. She's been saving up her love for the last 10 years, and now she's spending it all at once. Yes. And it's not an easy thing, saving up the love you feel, never being able to use it. Emily has the chance for love now, and she's grabbing with both hands, but it still might get away from her. Oh, she's entitled to that chance, Doctor. No matter what's happened for 10 years, He's her husband. She's always remembered that. And now he knows it, too, because of the fingerprint business. I'll get your coffee. Yes, the fingerprint business. Is it enough? Will it be enough? Look, I mean it. I mean, why not? Look, all we have to do is get a picture of Raven from Logan, right? Blow it up into one of those big wanted kinds of posters and put it in every beauty parlor and expensive dress shop in town. Now, that ought to flush her out right quick, don't you think? Oh, that's a great idea, Calvin. <laughs> Sooner or later, we'll find out Raven's address, but I don't think that that's going to help Logan get Jamie back. Mm. Mm, now, that's the easy part. All Logan has to do, see, is wait until the babysitter's alone with Jamie. Then he goes up to the front door, knocks on it, makes a few legal noises, takes the kid, and scoots. Fight fire with fire, huh? Right. Except Logan is the one who gets burned. Yeah, that's true. I don't think Logan's going to do something like that. Yeah, well, I don't see what the alternative is. I mean, how else is he going to get the baby back? Due process. Are you kidding? I mean, you... You know how slow the wheels of justice turn. I mean, the kid could be in any condition by that time. Uh, pass the ketchup. Where's the ketchup? It's funny. Oh, when no. Raven takes the baby, it's called repossession. If Logan tries it, it's called kidnapping. Mm -hmm. And whatever happened to all men being equal in the eyes of the law, etc. Yeah. 
Logan has no legal claim on the child. That's what's the problem. Yeah, knowing Raven, if he did try something, she'd probably insist that a warrant for his arrest be taken out. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a bad scene all the way around, but uh, sorry, but there's nothing we can do about it. Well, now, isn't that a switch? When Raven first copped the kid, you were the one who wanted to lead the lynch mob up to her hotel room. Well, I'm just being realistic about it. At least you're being something. You haven't said much all day. It's so hard to be polite with your mouth full. Well, you're not doing a bad job. I'm sorry to be in so indifferent, but uh, well, I've got a lot on my mind lately. Are you, uh, by any chance, still considering taking that undercover job out west? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I mean, I wasn't at first, but um, Mallory seemed to make the job sound kind of exciting you know yeah so what's not exciting right here i mean we don't exactly spend our on-duty hours in monticello uh swinging in hammocks and sipping iced tea you know i just wonder if i'll miss being away from monticello for three or four months that's all sounds like an awfully long time to me i think i'll miss this town i might even miss these bad hamburgers mm -hmm. is uh that the only thing keeping you from going no, there are other considerations. Well, I think I'm going to have to ask you guys to excuse me. I am due for a lineup, and you know how they hate to start without the arresting officer. Well, it looks like it's about that time. I better go too. Um, I haven't uh, finished my sandwich. Uh, why don't you stay with me for a few minutes, Deborah? Do you mind, Cal? No, no. Look, uh, sit tight, and uh, if anybody's looking for you, I'll uh, send someone over with the word, okay? Okay. See you guys later. Take care. I think we should talk about something. Well, I appreciate you wanting my opinion, Steve, but I think this is a decision you're going to have to make on your own. You know, I'm not sure that... I don't know. I don't think I'm going to miss Monticello during these summer months, especially those hot days Steve, in August. Steve, for your information, I am going to miss you very much. I'm going to be very concerned about you. I know how dangerous undercover assignments can be. Thanks a heap. What's this all about? Well, I, uh, I don't want to go out west for three or four months and come back and find out that you forgot all about me. <laughs> Nothing like that's going to happen. I'm not so sure. Ever since I asked you to marry me, you seem to have drifted further and further away. That's just your imagination. Is it? I thought by now you would have come up with a decision. You told me to take my time. That you wanted me to be sure. You know, if I hop on that plane for three or four months, it's going to give you a little longer to avoid the issue. I am not avoiding the issue, Steve. I've been very busy these days. And this whole thing with Jamie's just come up. Okay. I've been trying to find a time and a place to sit down and discuss it with you. Well, then you have a decision. I love you, Steve. And if that were the only consideration, I would have said yes to you a long time ago. But love isn't the only consideration. What do you think it should be? Honestly, Steve, do you? Would you make any sacrifice for love? Would you be willing to give up everything else you believe in just to be with somebody you love? People have been doing that for ages. And people have been regretting it for ages, too. Steve, I just don't think it's right to ask somebody to make sacrifices. Deborah, I ask you to marry me. I don't think that that's a sacrifice. Steve, you don't want to be married to a cop. You want a wife. What is wrong with that? Because sooner or later, you're going to expect me to give it all up. You're going to want me to have babies and have a family and do everything that you think married life is about. I want that too, but I don't want it now. All right, so it's a turn down. Don't use that word. What else do you want to call it? It's more important to you to have a, a job and be a cop than to have a marriage. You see, you do think those two things are incompatible. Yes, I guess I do, a little. 
thank you for being honest. Well, I guess it's not entirely hopeless. If we both tried. Hello? Hmm. Sorry, I'd wait. Barbara's doctor says that she's going to be out of bed tomorrow and that she should be out of the hospital in about a week. That's good. That's good. Listen, I'm running late now. What do you say we eat in the magnificent splendor of the hospital cafeteria? Uh, all right. Well, I'll just have a cup of coffee and I'll watch you feed your face. Oh, no, the food's not that bad. The AMA gave it three scalpels. Oh, I know. Well, listen, I'm not really hungry anyway. I had lunch with Nancy before. I oh, really? Here. How is she? She's quite, quite good. She heard some excellent news and it really made her day. Really? Anything I might be interested in? No. You know about it already. I do. Uh-huh. I, uh, hope you don't mind that, uh, I kind of let the cat out of the bag, or should I say the baby out of the bag? You told Nancy we were planning to have a baby? <laughs> well, you know, ever since we agreed about it, I've been really excited, and I, I just had to share the news. Well, sir, is expecting you to become an expectant mother. Just mm -hmm. April. Oh, just April. Oh, well, I had to tell April. I'm sure, you did. She's going to be a child's aunt. <laughs> I'm not sure. And Geraldine. Geraldine. Oh, well, did, was she happy about it? Yeah, yeah. she really was. Oh, that's and good. Which is about a dozen strangers that I saw oh, on the street. Oh, they take the news well, do they? Mm -hmm. They were all thrilled. All thrilled? Them, yeah. Well, that's nice. Kind of ruins my surprise. Oh, what surprise? Well, it's just now that so many people know about it. So no point in my running that full-page ad in the Monticello News I was planning. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, since you're in such a good mood, maybe it's the ideal time to ask you for a favor. Oh, name it. It's yours. You know, I've never been able to pass up uh, doing a favor for a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the beautiful woman is Nancy. Her nephew, Kelly... He's interested in getting into show business, and Nancy thinks you might be able to help him. Me? Mm-hmm. The only openings I ever arranged were in, are in operating room. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you see, Kelly, evidently, is a very talented but inexperienced puppeteer. Well, what could I do? Well, Nancy thinks he might be able to get some experience by doing charity performances, maybe in a hospital. Oh, good Lord, they're always looking for volunteers to help entertain the patients. Right. Well, um, Kelly uh, could go in and, and, and do that, but he has to know how to apply officially. Oh, we've got a social worker who coordinates bedside programs. I'm sure she'd be happy to have him put on a show. Wonderful. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know where he might be a big hit is in the children's ward. I'll see if I can set something up. Of course. Right. Well, listen, since you're being so great about this, why don't I buy you lunch? I'm not going to pass that up. Mm -hmm. Ready when Listen, you are. We've got to make a small detour. I promised Herb uh, Marriott that I would look in on a patient of this, all right? Sure. Down this way. Front desk, may I help you? I can't understand it. I mean, how, how could I have disappeared nine years ago and then just shown up on your doorstep? Where did I go? Well, what did I do? I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. It's a part of the past, and it's over and done with. Yeah, what about the nine years, Emily? Nine years, nine years, I'll never get back. You should be concerned about the next nine years and how you want us to spend them. How can you be so forgiving? Why do you want to spend the rest of your life with a man... with a man who could have done anything? Because I didn't know that man. The Kirk Michaels I know is the one right here. And he's kind, and gentle, and wonderful. And as far as you're concerned, the old Kirk Michaels, he, he's dead and buried? I'm more than willing to forget the past and just concentrate on the future. The wonderful future you and I are going to have together. You know, the idea of uh, starting all over again with you, a brand new life, is very appealing. I'm going to do everything I can to make you happy. We could have something really special. Let's make a pact. Mm -hmm. From now on, let's live in the future. And uh, never look back. Oops. 
to me like your patient is getting all the tender, loving care he needs. But this is your business, Mrs. Peabody. Why don't you just tell me what you think is a fair price? Well, it's an absolutely scrumptious house. Very desirable, in my opinion. Just perfect for a young family. But... But, but what? I mean, does the place have termites or something? <laughs> no, nothing like that at all. I happen to know the house is structurally sound. Don't forget, my office sold it to you only a little... Yes, that's right. The price, Mrs. Peabody. What do you think is a fair price? Well, it's just that the housing market is so dreadful these days. Mortgage rates are sky high. So just the sort of young family that might want the house may be just the kind that can't afford to buy it. You can't exactly choose your buyer. What do you mean I can't choose my buyer? I told you I'm in no desperate need to, to, to sell the house. Now, listen, what's important... Oh, look, Mrs. Peabody, please, just tell me, what do you think is a good price? Well, what I thought was about 125000 Firm, of course. <sighs> Well, what's the problem? I mean, that's more than we paid for it. Oh, my dear, inflation. Inflation, everything's gone up in price. You must know that. Housing most and what? Look, you don't worry about it. It's my job, and I'll do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you do that. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know what to make of her. That is my rather eccentric real estate lady. <laughs> so I gather. <sighs> April. Are you really sure you want to sell that lovely house of yours? Yes, the house is definitely on the market. I just hope the right people buy it. That's all. That's that's all that's really important to me. Yes, of course. I'm sure it is. I don't know, Geraldine. It may sound really silly, but I just can't picture people in that place who don't get along or are fighting all the time. Not, not after all the love that I know what used to be in that place. The dream house for the dream couple. Well, that would be the ideal resolution. Great idea. Listen, I'm really sorry for all of these interruptions. Hello? Oh, hi. I'm so glad you're home. Oh, Raven. Hello. Hi. Look, I'm on my way over. You didn't forget about our date, did you? Oh, no, of course not. I'm rather looking forward to it. Good, me too. We'll talk about the kids. Fine. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Raven is, uh, flying up for the evening. I didn't realize you and Raven were socializing. We're not, Geraldine. I'm just very curious to know about Jamie, to know how he is, and what she plans on doing with her now that she has him. I'd like to know that myself. I know you would. I know how you care about Jamie. If you don't mind, my dear, I think I'd like to stay. Dancing shoes too far back in the closet. I think there's a possibility that we could open this weekend. You know, I think you're going to have half the population of Monticello standing in line to get in here. Hopefully. However, don't get too wrapped up in your new toy because uh, you have a little something to do tonight, remember? I know what you're talking about, Raven, but you have to realize that the unicorn is my first priority. Don't you go back on your word? Never forgive you. I don't remember giving you my word. Everyone knows when I blow in your ear, you follow me. Let me switch off the music. I hope you don't intend staying out too late tonight. If you think you're going to have me in bed by 9 o'clock, forget it. 
It's just that I'm a little concerned about that babysitter you got for Jamie. Gloria's fine. Jamie will be okay. How can you be so unconcerned? I really feel sorry for that little boy. Elliot, the doctor said Jamie is just fine. He's going to grow up to be a very big, strong boy. Oh, you left out rich. <laughs> but there is the possibility that Jamie will reach his majority before the big payoff comes his way. And then the decision on how to use his money will be his, and his alone. He'll be a good son. He won't forget his dear old lady. Well, tell me something, Raven. What if he remembers how his mother treated him during his formative years? What if he shares Logan's opinion of you? He could cut you off without a cent. This conversation is getting absurd. Besides, you don't have any more time. I have to make a phone call, and why don't you just run along and I'll let myself out? <laughs> Thank you. Wish me luck. Good luck. What can I do for you, Raven? I'm kind of busy. I just wanted to call and let you know why I got so upset in your office this afternoon. You were rather upset, weren't you? And understandably so. Logan was livid when he found out that I had the kid, and I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to enlist your detectives to form some sort of plot to get him back. Now, I've told you that none of my officers are going to do anything illegal against you or your son. Thank you, Derek. I'm just doing my job. Well, I hope you don't think that I was trying to suggest that you were doing anything illegal. I mean, I don't want to offend you. Raven, don't concern yourself about offending me. You don't sound as if you've accepted my apology. I forgave you. Then how about dinner next week? Raven, I don't think that'd be a very good idea. Come on, Derek, I made a mistake. Are you going to hold a grudge against me or what? I'll think about it. It would mean a lot to me. Please say you will. All right, all right. It's a date. Look, there's somebody knocking at my door. I'll have to get back to you tomorrow. Okay. Come in. Uh, Chief, you got a minute? What can I do for you, Steve? I thought you went off duty an hour ago. Well, I did. There's something I wanted to tell you. I thought you'd like to know as soon as possible. I'm listening. Well, it's about that undercover assignment out in Tucson. Did you find any takers? Waiting on answers from a couple of people. Why? Well, I know someone who definitely wants to volunteer. You're looking at him. Well, you said I was perfect for the job. Your name's at the top of my list, but the decision has got to come from you. Well, okay. I'll, uh... Clean out my desk, grab the assignment sheet, and be on my way. I trust you've thought this all through. You know, you're going to get it get mixed up with a pretty rough crowd. I can handle myself. I know you can. I know you can, Steve. But for God's sake, don't blow your cover. Don't let them find out you're a cop. Well, I won't tell if you don't. <laughs> and that three months? That's only an estimate. If these hoods decide to hide under their rocks a little while longer, there's no telling how long this could take. And once you're there... It's for the duration. No problem. Frankly, I'm a little surprised. When I first talked to you about this assignment, you didn't seem very enthusiastic. Well, I realized the Monticello PD could get along fine without me. I'm going to miss you. I'll send you a picture postcard. Steve, seriously. There's going to be no picnic. Come on, what made you change your mind? Well, the idea of the assignment always appealed to me. I wasn't crazy about leaving Monticello, though. Sure, I know it's your home. Your friends are here. Hey, I'll be back in three or four months. We'll see who uh, turns out to greet me, right? No, Calvin, I said no. Now, fair is fair. Look, Red, you know how slowly old hunt and peck stone are types. Look, 
If, if I get home late tonight, Star is going to do me bodily harm, Deborah. You're going to love it and you know it. Come on, please, just this one time. I'll make it up to you, I promise. How can I refuse? All okay, right. you get to file and I get to type. Thank you. Yeah. Now, let's see. Read me. I don't quite know what yet. Curious, get this done and get out of here. See, see. It's good. Oh, excuse me. I was looking for Detective Saxon's office. I seem to have stumbled into the typing pool by mistake. How are you, Logan? Hey, what are you doing around here this late? Well, I thought I'd come by and say hello. I had to pick up a few files on the way home. A little homework, you know. Not much else to keep me occupied these evenings. We all feel terrible about what happened, Logan. Yeah, I wanted to thank you both for your concern and your support. You've been terrific. Oh, it was a pleasure. It's just that none of us are very happy about getting put out of the babysitting business. Yeah, all look forward to going back to work. It's not going to happen. Not for a while, anyway. Jamie has no business being with Raven. Raven has won the battle. Maybe not the war, but for now, my hands are tied. So. Well, how about a little help from your friends? Huh? Not the kind of help you mean. No way. You try and take him back, you will ruin my legal position. So no rescue missions. Please, you got to promise that. All right. Well, there's nothing that says that we can't keep an eye on Raven from afar. Now, that might be an idea. I mean, if she knew we had a little kind of casual surveillance going, it might make her very careful to mind her P's and Q's. I used to say it isn't a coincidence that I run into Raven every couple of days in the park. It's a mighty thin line between coincidence and harassment. Raven cannot be trusted with Jamie. If I find out she's been mistreating him, no matter what you say, Logan, that boy is not staying with her. Well, now, Deborah's idea might give Jamie a kind of protection, sort of. And I would feel better knowing that Raven didn't have a completely free hand. Mm -hmm. And if Raven takes so much as one step out of line, we can always call the child welfare. No, you can't do that. Your coincidences won't get you close enough to tell whether or not Jamie's being improperly raised. That's true. Mm. Oh, well, I'm glad I caught you, too, before you hit the streets. Hello, Logan. What are you doing this neck of the woods? Just visiting. Yeah, we were just talking to Logan about, you know, how to keep Jamie from suffering while Raven has him. Yeah, I was hoping that by... Well, by now, Raven would have brought Jamie back to where he belongs. No, she'll be keeping him for the duration of the custody battle, but no longer with any luck. Have you two spoken at all? <laughs> if I get on the phone with Raven, I'll be arrested for an obscene call. No. <laughs> April is acting as go-between. I don't envy her. Well, I hate to put her in that position, but at least Raven will talk to her. Yeah, at least there are some lines of communication being kept open. Maybe April will be able to find out what's on Raven's mind. Keep us posted. Will do. Listen, I gotta go. You figure out a way to make your little plan work, you can give me a call. Will do. Captain, say you should hear the great plan Red came up with for uh, keeping tabs on Jamie. Yes, we may be back in business, Steve. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to do this one without me. Oh, and you, a charter member of the Jamie Swift fan club. I'm shocked. Um, I have something to tell you. I hope you understand. What's up? Well, I just told Mallory I was going to take that assignment in Tucson. Hey, I'm going out west. <laughs> oh. Uh. I, uh, think I, uh, remembered something downstairs I have to get done. Um... Look, why don't you uh, stop by the locker room on your way out, huh? I don't believe this. It's a peach of an assignment. You said yourself, a woman could go, you'd be on the plane. All I said this afternoon was that I didn't want to marry you, Steve. At least not right now. When? I don't know when, but I didn't mean I wanted you out of my life. Well, it's not like I'm going off to the French Foreign Legions. I'll be back, maybe. You know I'm going to be miserable without you. What are you trying to do, spite me? I'm doing this because I love you. Really? Hey, you think it's going to be easy on me not to see you for a while? You don't have to go, Steve. I just... Well, at this point, I don't know what else to do to help you figure out how you feel about me. I know how I feel about you. I don't. I mean... I mean, you 
say you love me, but you don't want to marry me. Look, I know you're hurt. Are you trying to get away from me? Is that it? No. I want to be very close to you. And I guess it'll take being 2,000 miles away. You told me it was just going to be the two of us. What is she doing here? Raven, Geraldine and I were discussing station matters when she found out you were coming. She asked me if she could stay because she was very interested to hear how Jamie is doing. I have nothing to say to her. <sighs> Some friend you turned out to be. Raven, we can discuss this rather calmly. I simply want you to know, Raven, that I find your behavior utterly reprehensible. You have managed to disturb any number of lives simply to satisfy some selfish motive of your own. You have no right to judge me like that. It's none of your damn business. On the contrary. If it has to do with Logan and that baby, it is my business, damned or otherwise. I have a good mind to write Nadine. I have no doubt your mother would be very much interested in finding out exactly how her daughter is spending her time. Don't you dare do that. Well, after all, nobody on this side of the Atlantic has been able to talk any sense into you. Perhaps she can. What are you going to say to her? That I love Jamie so much I couldn't bear to be without him? That for the first time in my life I know exactly what it is I want to be a mother to my child? Not a very convincing performance, Raven, so don't wait for applause. Those are the reasons I took Jamie, and I'll swear to it on my mother's life. Raven, Geraldine is only interested in Jamie's welfare. You have to understand that. I've already talked to Nadine anyway. I told her exactly what happened and why. And does she know there are two sides to the story? If you write her a letter with some piece of fiction, it's going to upset her a great deal. I can assure you I have no desire to inform Nadine that Raven is acting like the same old Raven. But Jamie is her grandson, and she has a right to know. Look... Nadine has enough problems right now. She doesn't need you to add to them. She hasn't been feeling very well. I didn't know that Nadine had been ill, but then I haven't heard from her in some time. Well, that's probably why she didn't want to upset you. And if you send her a letter giving her all this conflicting advice, she's, she's going to get so upset it might kill her. Somehow. I don't think that's likely. But all right, Raven, I'll leave Nadine out of this. Thank you. Please. Put aside this childish desire for revenge and give Logan back his son. Is it so unfathomable to you that I should want to raise my own baby? Oh, uh, considering your past behavior, I don't think you can blame anyone for being skeptical. I can't believe that you want this responsibility. Well, I do, and you just wait and see. I'm going to be the best mother in the world. And if you're that conscientious, then what are you doing here? Why aren't you home with Jamie where you belong? I have a very competent nurse babysitting for Jamie. I see. If you'll excuse me, I think I'd better go. I don't see that anything can be accomplished here this evening. April. I hope you'll forgive this little display. Perhaps we can meet again sometime later in the week. I'll call you tomorrow. We'll set a time. Raven. Let me give you a little piece of advice before I go. Be very careful what you do in this situation. Or so help me, you'll live to regret it. Is that a threat? <laughs> no, my dear. That is a promise. Sometimes I feel like the whole world is against me. And I really don't want to be against the entire world, but that's the way it goes. Raven, the whole time you were in England, Geraldine and Logan took care of Jamie. They are both extremely attached to that baby. You're on their side? I am on no one's side. Look, I'll tell you one thing, though. It upsets me tremendously to see how depressed Logan is about this whole sordid mess. He worries about Jamie constantly. Well, I want to be reasonable about it. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give him visitation rights. Oh, well, Raven, that's just too generous of you. April, I am simply a mother who loves her baby and wants to raise him. Is there anything so terrible about that? No. You're a mother you should understand. <sighs> Look, I personally dread the thought of Julia ever being away from me. Well, if I lose Jamie, I'll just want to curl up and die. <sighs> 
don't want him to take my baby away from me. Well, that is something that you have to sit down with Logan and decide between yourselves. You could help me if you wanted. Oh, come on, me. Yes, you could give me that letter that I gave you. It would make all the difference in the world. Would you do that for me? Look, you must have it. It's much too important a piece of information to just throw away. Raven, to be perfectly honest with you, I have absolutely no idea where that letter is. Can't you find it? It would mean so much to me. Oh, I'm sure it would. April, I am desperate to get that letter. I am begging you. Raven, that letter could turn up absolutely anywhere. And if it turns up in the custody court, the judge will think I intended to give Jamie away and I'll never see him again. That's right. That letter doesn't put you in a good light, does it? All right, I made a mistake. Do I deserve to be punished like this? Come on, you're a mother. Surely you understand. Please, you can't refuse me. Please. Last time I looked, it was ten minutes of nine. Oh, my gosh. I didn't mean to sleep that late. How long have you been up? A couple of hours. I don't I don't think I slept very much last night. Oh, I hope that's not true. I don't remember falling off. I, I mean, I woke up when the sun was coming through the window. I got dressed, and I've been thinking. How are you feeling? My ribs are killing me. Oh. <laughs> that's probably why I didn't sleep very well. I'm so sorry. So I'm just glad the car that hit me wasn't going any faster. I'm glad that man was able to stop in time. It was my fault, Emily. I shouldn't have been out in the street. I mean, considering the shape I was in, I'm just glad he didn't decide to sue me. Oh, this really has been an awful trip for you, hasn't it? What's awful is that it was so useless, Emily. You know, I, I, I've been thinking. Since I don't know where I went when I left here nine years ago, there's no point in staying. Does that mean you want to leave? I've been sitting here thinking about what to do. All I can come up with is to go home. Home. Wherever that is. Mr. 
really very nice of you to stop by and pick these up. I appreciate it. Even though I could have had a messenger send them over. Oh, don't be silly, please. It's on my way. Besides, I'd never get coffee this good at the paper. Well, thank you. But I'm not going to let you stay too long. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have plenty of very important things to do down at your office. Well, oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That phone hasn't stopped ringing these days. Good morning. Uh, Mrs. Scott. Mm -hmm. It's Mrs. Peabody, the real estate broker. My, you are an early riser. Good morning. Well, I thought I'd come over to your house first thing this morning, and it's a good thing I did. Mrs. Scott, I'm sorry to tell you, but your house was broken into last night. I can't believe it. That's, ne that's never happened before. It was always so safe out there. Well, I suppose if a house is vacant long enough, it becomes a kind of target. Uh, you really should have installed some kind of burglar alarm system. Look, I, I never thought of anything like that. Um, how bad was it? W what did they take? Well, fortunately, I don't think they took anything at all. What? Well, I mean, if they were looking for cash or jewelry or valuables of any kind, I mean, they certainly chose the wrong house. I mean, you'd already taken almost everything of value out of the place. And what you didn't take, I picked up yesterday afternoon and shipped to you in Monticello, just as you asked me to do. Yes, I appreciate that. There really isn't a thing left in the place, except the furniture, of course, and they obviously didn't have a moving van. <laughs> I emptied every single drawer and closet. Yes, I, I know. Uh, listen, how do you know the place was broken into? Well, for one thing, the door was open. I could see some broken glass around the entranceway. Listen, do you want me to notify the police? No, no, I, I don't want you to involve the police. It, it, it doesn't seem as though there was much damage, and I, I don't want to deal with the police. Well, that's up to you, of course. Yeah, listen, it was probably someone who just needed a place to spend the night, a, a, a tramp or a hobo or something like that. Well, as you know, I listed the property for sale, and today is the first day, and I thought I'd just stay around and see if we get a buyer. Oh, you don't have to. Well, my office is being painted anyway, and since your phone is still working, I really don't mind. Who knows? We may get lucky, sell the house on the first day. Anyway, you take it easy, okay? Uh, but, yes, thank you, Mrs. Peabody. Bye-bye. Bye. Problems out in Oakdale. Yeah, I guess it could have been worse. House was broken into, but they really didn't take anything. There wasn't really anything to take. Uh -huh. Did they do any damage? Uh... No, apparently not. I guess I can consider myself pretty lucky. Well, an empty house is always an attraction to burglars. Yeah, well, here's to hoping it isn't empty very long. Oh, April, are you really sure that you want to sell it? No, I, I know. I know that, that the memories right now are very painful for you, but, well, in a few years, you and Julia could use it for weekends or summer. No, 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 Nancy, I'll just as soon sell it to people who will enjoy it. I mean, people who, who can appreciate the house as much as Draper and I did. Just hope they're nice. I won't sell it to them if they're not nice. <laughs> okay. Well, you can afford to be selective. Yeah. You want some more coffee? Hmm? Yeah, I'd love some. Thanks. And then I have to leave. Oh. It's really funny. What is? Well, the day before your house is up for sale, Somebody breaks into it. Please don't start that again. I told you the house was empty. So was every closet and every drawer, stark naked. I'm sure your friend April knows what you have in mind. Don't be ridiculous. In all likelihood, that letter you want so badly is locked up in a safety deposit vault in some bank. No, it isn't. I've already talked to April about the letter. She didn't give any indication that it was among her valuables. It's only valuable to me. Correction. It's more valuable to your husband. That's why I have to get it back. Not if he gets it first. He's probably already asked her for it. That's why he's being so nice to April. Thinks he can wheedle it out of her. He'll probably succeed. Mm -mm. He doesn't have it. I have to get that letter and tear it into a million pieces. I can't make my move until then. What move? I think it might be a little easier if Jamie and I move out of town. I 
wouldn't like that, Raven. You could come with me. Surely there must be something more to keep you in this town than a damned letter. And I can't come with you. I have the unicorn to take care of. It opens in a few days. It's very important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, this is very important to me, too. Raven, there is something more important to me than that unicorn. You know something? Sometimes your lips are like ice. Are you sure you're up to traveling? I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, that doctor at the hospital did say you really ought to take it easy for a while. Take it easy and do what? You sit around here and pay you $50 a day? The money is not important. Your father only gave you $300. It is now we're barely going to have enough money to pay the bill. Besides, I don't like the idea of you nursing me. You're not forcing me, you know. You did enough of that back at back at your place, but there you had your father and Molly to help. No. Well, the only logical thing to do is to go back. Well, if you're sure that's what you want to do. What good will it do to stay here? We found what we were looking for, didn't we? all about my career in Monticello. Hey, please don't be unhappy about that. I swear to you, the detective told me that you didn't do anything seriously wrong. <laughs> all right, you were arrested a few times, but you were never convicted. Anybody, and... anybody that's arrested that many times is an habitual criminal. I mean, just because they didn't get an indictment doesn't mean that I'm innocent. I didn't say anything about an indictment. An indictment comes before before a trial. It just means the police didn't have enough evidence to bring the case to court. Well, you were, you were never in prison. Not in Monticello, because I left. But where did I go, Emily? What did I do? We're never going to find out now. Look, it'll all come back to you at some point. I'm sure it will. But you, you got to stop worrying about the past. You have your future to consider. Yeah, and I have been considering it. And I know what I don't want to do. What's that? I don't want to sponge off of your father for the rest of my life. He can't afford to have a non-paying boarder around. My father doesn't think of you as a boarder. He thinks of you as a son-in-law. But I'm a sponge just the same, and he's not a wealthy man right there especially since his illness he's been taking in fewer patients my father's one of those doctors who's not very good at collecting fees you both would have been a lot better off if i had never come back don't you ever say that you've brought more happiness to that house than there's been in 10 years and i'm happier than i've ever been and when i'm happy daddy's happy but he's going to change his mind about that no i've been thinking and i have to get a job of course when your strength comes back. Yeah, but what do I do, Emily? I mean, uh, I don't have a skill, I don't have a trade. I mean, if I do, I don't remember it. My resume is going to be a blank sheet of paper. Look, will you stop worrying about it? There is nothing we can do about it now anyway. So why don't we just pack up and leave? I'm sorry. You know, I was reading somewhere that misery these days just doesn't love company insists on it. You know I love you, Kirk. And I hope someday that you're going to learn to love me too the way you used to. And then we're going to be able to handle anything. Anything at all. Emily, come on. You almost ready? Look what I found, a little stuffed animal. It's not mine. No, <laughs> it's brand new. It's even got a price tag on it. That officer said the people who were here before us had a baby. I bet it's theirs. Well, what should we do with it? Leave it at the front desk? I don't think they're going to come back for it. Yeah, you're probably right. Just sit there at the desk getting all dusty and lonesome. <sighs> oh, no, you don't. I'll take those. You can take him. <laughs> I'm glad you stopped by this morning. It's the way you kind of made my day. I thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, Mike and I will try to get over again soon. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe if you feel like getting away for a while, 
some evening you'll come over for dinner? Oh, I'd love it. Just as soon as I feel comfortable with the idea of leaving Julia with a stranger. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I sound like an overanxious mother? No, you don't sound like an overanxious mother. In fact, I think you're quite wonderful with the baby. Thank you. So do I. <laughs> I don't know. I love her a lot. She's so easy. I just hope I don't spoil her. Mm. I don't think that you'll be spoiling her. You can't spoil a baby with too much loving. It's funny. Miles said something like that to me the other day. Something about the, the smaller they are, the more love they need. I guess he's a bit of an authority. He's been a real good father to Adam. Adam really adores him. Yeah. By the way, did you know that Miles is doing me a big favor right now? No, what? Well, he's giving my nephew Kelly a chance to break into show business. Miles? Hmm, slight exaggeration. I, I told you that Kelly's a puppeteer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, thanks to your brother, Kelly is over at Monticello General putting on a performance in the children's ward. <laughs> is about to begin. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear you. What? Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, you are about to meet the famous Poco Puppets. Let's give them a big hand. Huh? Oh. oh, you're on, Kelly. It's okay. a tough crowd. Okay, <laughs> doctor. The funny thing is, I'm nervous. Oh, no. Break a leg. Okay. Okay, another big hand. The Poco Puppets. Hi, boys and girls. Uh, my name is Kelly McGrath, and I brought a few of my friends with me today. And they're real shy, so you're going to have to give them some real special attention. Now, if you're all set, I'm going to crawl in this little house back here and tell them you're ready to see them, okay? Okay. 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 Oh, there he is. Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm Wally the Walrus. You feeling better? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, today I'm going to tell you the story about... The princess who never smiled. And I'll introduce the princess. Are you ready, princess? Okay. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young princess. You can come up now, princess. You have to say hello to the princess. Hi. Hi. Hello. And this princess was very sad. She never smiled. And so her daddy, the king, made a contest, and whoever could make her laugh would become the king and marry her. And you can tell him the rest. Oh, well, the first contestant is ready, and I, I hope he can make me laugh. Hey, nanny, nanny, no. Hey, nanny, nanny, no. <laughs> Hiya, princess. Hey, did you hear the one about the little troubadour who tried to make the prince? I don't like jokes. Oh, you don't like jokes. Well, I have just the thing for you, my dear, right down here. Oh, this is going to make you laugh. Here, now, come over here, princess, and uh, take a look inside. What do you see? I don't see anything. Very good. Now, now help me turn it over. That's it. Now, I've got to say some magic words. Um, I don't know any magic words. Anybody out there know some magic words? Yeah. Presto change. Oh, that's a good one. We'll try that. Here we go. Presto change Flowers! Oh. Ooh, that was good. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. But it's not very funny. No, no, it's not very funny. You're right. Well, I tell you what, Princess, I have something really much more interesting back here. Oh, you're going to love this. Here. Now, here, take a look. This is my, my magic box. And I want you to take a look in the box. Now, is there anything in the box? No, there's nothing in the box. Okay, now, now we have to turn the box over. That's it. Okay, now, now we need another magic word, a different one. Anybody have a... Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. That's a powerful word. Here we go. Abracadabra. Look what we have, like, here's a handkerchief. And another one. And another one still. Oh, every color, every color of the rainbow. Oh, oh, they're beautiful, but, but when do they stop? Well, I never know. It depends how much magic I use. That was a very strong magic word. Oh, here's another one. Oh, dear, another one still. Well, I hope it stops soon. I've got to get to lunch. Oh, well, there's another one, and oh, one after that. Oh, there, there, that's the end of it. Oh, very, very, very good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But it wasn't very funny. Oh, dear. Oh, Princess, you cut me to the quick. I've got one more thing to show you. Now, this will really make you laugh. Here it is. Help me up over here. Now, I'm going to do a puppet show for you. <gasps> oh, I don't like puppet shows. Oh, you're going to like this puppet show. Now, now you sit down and be a good girl, and I will go down and start the puppet show. Here we go. <laughs> Good morning. 
April, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, Miles. Uh, Nancy Carr uh, just left here a little while ago. She said you're doing something in the children's ward today. Well, I'm not doing much. Uh, her nephew is putting on a puppet show. He's very good, too. I wish I could see the whole thing, but I have some patience to see, and I have my sister to call. You didn't have to bother. Well, I talked to Nicole, and she said you didn't sound so good today. Oh, well, uh, no, it's just that I didn't sleep all that well last night. It wasn't Julia or anything. You know, she's just a little lamb. It... I just did a lot of dreaming. Oh, I see. Oh, Miles, look, they're not, they're not bad dreams. They're not nightmares. And to tell you the truth, I can't even tell you what exactly I dreamt of. It's just that uh, Draper's in all of them. I woke up several times in the middle of the night and I felt as if he were really near me. Very close to me. I feel that right now, too. But I'll tell you something strange. I'm, I'm not letting the dreams haunt me anymore. I'm letting myself take comfort from the from the feeling that he's near me, that he's somehow with me. It's really pretty around here, isn't it? There's one thing that's really nice about Monticello. You don't have to drive very far to be back in the country. Anyway, don't turn here. Don't turn left. Stay. Stay straight. Why? I don't know. But don't turn. Just keep going straight. All right. There's a, there's a roadside. It's probably the name of the town. What is it? You look so strange. There's something about about that sign, about the street. Well, it said Oakdale. Does that remind you of something? No. No, I, I don't know. Honey, you have to tell me what you're feeling. It, it, does, does any of this mean anything to you? I don't know, Emily. Oh, what a lovely house! Did you see it? it had a sign. In the front on the lawn for sale. You know what? I'm going to turn this car around. We're going to go back and look at it just for the fun of it. 